Hi, Leo. Welcome to your reading for October 2024. Um, this is going to be for my beautiful Leo suns, Leo moons, Leo rising, um, those intuitively guided, which many of you are now. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, you could have planets in the sign of Leo, or you could certainly be in love with the Leo. I know I had a lot of Leo love in my life. Um, so platonically, romantically. And I just want to say, you know, I do read through my spirit guide. So, um, and I feel like my son, who is a Leo, is now a spirit guide. So I always feel his energy in your reading, in our reading, let's just say. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, oh, so for October, we are doing opposite signs again. So your opposite, which is Aquarius. Um, I just got done with that. So that is out for you. And the reason why I'm doing opposite signs, just for those who may be new, um, I feel like we can learn so much from our opposite. You know, like I'm a Virgo sun. Um, my opposite would be Pisces and, you know, they're all about the cups and, and I'm all about being grounded and, you know what I mean? So there's a lot I can learn from them and the other way around. So, um, you know, if you want to check out Aquarius reading, you know, I'll let you know if there's similarities between the readings. It's still pretty fresh in my mind. Um, but real quick, I do want to give a shout out to the special Leos in my life, starting with my grandson, Lexington, um, July 23rd, right on that cusp. And um, he's definitely a go-getter, like a Leo. But then I can feel the the cancer also in him. Um, my mom, who has crossed over, her name was Connie. Her name was Mary, Mary Constance, to be all, you know. She called herself Mary, but it was, it's, you know, she called herself Connie, um, but her name is Mary Constance, and she was August 5th. My son, my beautiful son, Stephen, with a PH. <laughs> um, it, you know, and the only reason I say that is because it's something we said our whole lives, like, no, I'm a PH. Um, anyways, August 12th. My soul sister, Diane, August 16th. And many of you know Sam is right on that cusp. Sam's my boyfriend, August 23rd. So he's right on that cusp. He was born at 1, like 1 a.m. around that time. So he may he may even be, you know, more of a Leo. I can definitely see the Leo qualities in him. And he, he likes to claim that he's a Leo. So, you know. Um... Another thing we're doing a little different is last month I used the deck of major arcanas to get some bullet points for your reading. Um, I really love doing it this way, but this month um, I decided to use the romance angels. And one of the reasons I decided to use the romance angels is because love always comes up in a reading. You know, these readings are about your life, you know, all parts of your life. But I feel like love is also a part of that. Um, in one format or another. So I decided to use Romance Angels for the um, little bullet points. So we'll shoot for three to four cards. But whatever comes out, comes out. We, of course, are going to get Mother Mary's beautiful words of wisdom for you. We're going to use the Gilded Trail to go deeper and deep we go. You know, that's why the readings are so long. Um, I've been kind of explaining it this month as, like, when I do your reading, it's literally like I am reading, like I'm watching your movie. I'm reading your book. And um, I can see where certain chapters, like, repeated themselves. Um, but nonetheless, I'm reading, I'm reading your book and hopefully helping you to create the next chapter because... It is your seeds of intention that are going to create what's next. Um, so, not even sure why I said all that. Oh, why we go so deep. Because I want everything to unfold. And I feel like sometimes 
not sometimes, but you really have to know where you've been to understand where you're at right now, who you are right now. And um, that better helps you in the future. You know, know oneself. All right. So we're going to use the Psychic Tarot for your main spread. And I'm using the exact same decks um, that I use for Aquarius. So every opposite, their decks are the same. All right. Let's open this reading up, Leo. Got to bring the lid down. And I am going to start with Mother Mary. By the way, everything is always pre-shuffled before you get here. I just like to give it a shuffle or two with you here. You know, I had a comment where someone literally had a vision of them sitting in the room with me with their mom and sisters who have all crossed over. And, you know, I won't go into the whole comment, but I feel that's how I, I picture it in my mind's eye. Like, you're all right here with me. And it doesn't even matter when you find this reading. I just trust that it will be found. You'll find it or it'll find you in divine timing. I have to put a date on it. But other than that, I'm a big believer in divine timing. All right. So, Mother Mary. My beautiful Leo's. Mm. Open your heart, Leo. Open your heart. I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all the forms of love. You know, I talk about that all the time where I feel like there's different vibrations of love, you know, lower vibrations. And sometimes that's how we start life, right? Like we're tempted to a certain type of person and that didn't work out. Then we get tempted back to someone just like that. You know, that's where we just have to figure out, okay, wait a minute. Where's my own vibration? You know, am I attracting this type of energy to me? Or, you know, if somehow, some way it finds you. I definitely feel like it's, it's where we have to like look. How do I want to say this? Um... Just look within oneself. Ask yourself, where is my vibration? Am I going to close my heart due to, you know, lower vibrational relationships I was in? You know, one of the ways you can tell that is, and I know I've had a few, where you think it's love, 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 and then something happens. It ends. You may think your world is over for a moment, but then you meet someone new. and. I feel like if we take that time in between and really think about, like, where am I at? You know, am I being true to myself? Um, am I keeping my heart open and then trusting that as I raise my own vibration, that's the energy that's going to vibrate back to me? Mm. I don't know why I'm picking all that up from this card, but I am. Open your heart. Open your heart, Leo. I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. Probably read that from the book at the end. Or maybe even take another card. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. All my readings, I play it by ear. I don't have anything like preset other than, you know, the decks I'm going to use. But a lot of times those decks come to me. All right, so let's give the Radiance Angels a couple of shuffles. Give my cut. reason why I cut my cards, just so you know, if you're new, to me, it, it's introducing them into the reading. It's saying, I am now ready. I am now open for the messages. And as I say that, I feel like, wait a minute, I should just clear my energy for a second, which I'd advise you. Also, just some deep breathing. This is a great time to also ask your spirit guides for signs of confirmation. Is this reading for me? Sometimes a whole reading will make sense. 
And sometimes it's just bits and pieces like certain messages. It's always to help you raise your vibration. Okay. Let's begin. Mm, very soon. No wonder Mary, Mother Mary saying, open your heart. Very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Interesting. I mean, right there, it tells you your power, right? Because it is the seeds that you're planting right now is what will be your future harvest. So what seeds am I planting right now? You know, and I feel like where it says clearly decide, I don't feel like that means like saying that, you know, the person that comes in, you know, must be of an Italian, um, must be Italian, must have dark hair, dark eyes, you know, that type of thing. I, I don't feel like, I mean, you can certainly ask that. But I feel like you really want to kind of let go um, and let the let the universe surprise you. There's something happening. Okay. Love yourself first. Love yourself first. Your self-respects, your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Love yourself first. That makes complete sense to me. You know, where Mother Mary is saying to open your heart, she's also asking you to open your heart for yourself. All right, we have express your love. Interesting. It's like it's moving step by step. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. And then, wow, hello. This could be the one. So interesting. We started with very soon. And now we have this could literally be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. Interesting. Um, I do have to say that I felt like Aquarius's reading talked a lot about past life love. And this could also be, you know, similar type energy. So very soon, love yourself first. Be willing to express that love. And then knowing that who's ever coming into your life, this could be the one. All right. Let's go ahead and bring in the psychic trail, which will be your main spread. Give it a shuffle or two. Let's give them a cut. Wow. Like everything wants to come out together. Okay. Hope. This is a star card. And interesting, it's Aquarius, this major arcana. Interesting. It doesn't mean that you're not you're you're um naturally uh what do I want to say? Like that this is talking about, you know, this is an Aquarius. But I just find it interesting because this is Aquarius's major arcana and I'm doing opposites. So this is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. It's about manifesting them. Hope. Keeping hope alive. Hello, Ace of Pentacles. Prosperity begins. Two different hands that are nurturing this seed. It's like something that feels like it definitely takes root. You know what I love about the Ace of Pentacles is it represents something that is coming into your physical world. Um, and, and I feel like, boy, is it showing you the power 
that you have in manifesting the type of life you'd like to see for yourself. You know, the Ace of Pentacles can be more than one thing. It can certainly talk about, like, you know, you doing something in the world and you starting to see the fruits of those labors. It could also be, like, um, let's say I'm beginning something new. There could be someone that could definitely help me. Who thinks like me. But nonetheless, I mean, hello. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And then the Ace of Pentacles literally means coming into your physical world. Oh my gosh. Leah. Yeah. So, Ace of Pentacles, now the Ace of Cups. And it says here, love begins. Two Aces back to back. One speaks about something coming into the physical world. It's tangible. And another, it's just love. Like, I feel like Leo has been busy Letting the universe know what Leo wants. We have partnerships and alliances. This is the Three of Pentacles. That may be why I felt like in this Ace of Pentacles, there were two hands that were really nurturing this seed. And even in the Three of Pentacles, if you just look at how these two people were holding each other, you know, it's not a handshake. To me, it's a sign of intimacy. Um, what I love about the Three of Pentacles, by the way, no matter which ace, if not both aces it's relating to, is it speaks about your individuality and um, trusting within that. You know, it can talk about doing something that maybe a lot of other people do. But honestly, I feel like no one will do it quite like you. That reminds me of a song. I can't think of it right now. But anyways, partnerships and alliances, your individuality. This is about your creativity also. Boy, this first line looks fantastic. Wow, hello, material harvest. Leo. What have you been doing? This is the Nine of Pentacles. This talks about, well, it literally says material harvest, but it is the energy that you put into this. You know what I love about the Nine of Pentacles? It's, it's really an independent energy. Um, and, you know, who's the benefactor of the hard work? In the Nine of Pentacles, you are. You are. But I'm also feeling so much stronger on my own, like like where I can stand on my own two feet no matter what. And it's interesting that here is this other Ace of Pentacles, add that to the Nine of Pentacles, well, potential Ten of Pentacles. Hello, Temperance. Patience. I always love it when temperance shows up in a reading. So, yes, patience. And interesting because we open up the reading with the uh, romance angel saying very soon. And it feels like one of the things that I'm really being asked to do, um, let's just say in this time period, is to have my heart open. I feel like you yourself have definitely evolved. And it feels like the energy is following suit. So this patience that um, temperance asks for, you know, it's temporary. But it's trusting in divine timing. It definitely is showing divine working like hand in hand with you. So here you are. 
you know, right from the get-go, manifesting, planting those seeds, keeping that hope alive. And I feel like very quickly, the universe is answering you. And not just with love, but also within your money, within your creative house. You know, I always feel that Leo it doesn't mean that they're comfortable in it, but I feel like this, the, the, what's the word I want to, like the spotlight always wants to find you. Almost like you belong in the spotlight. Doesn't mean you're comfortable in it. Um, but I feel like with time, you could definitely be comfortable within it. So anyways, um, People on the board so far is Aquarius, Virgo, and Sagittarius. Choose wisely. Coming under that Ace of Cups. But sitting right next to Temperance. You know, this could talk about more than one option coming your way. <laughs> Um, and you ultimately, which, you know, it's just the way life works. You're ultimately going to make that decision. I felt like it was important for you to feel strong within yourself first and foremost. Like before I even bring love into the picture. And for some of you, this patience that Mother or Mother Mary, that temperance has asked for. You know, this this period of time, I feel like there is no waste of time. I, because if anything, I feel like you've just been learning and growing and growing and learning. And in a way, I do feel like you may have put yourself first, but but in a good way. You know what I mean? Like... If I don't feel strong within myself, then how can I feel strong within a relationship? We have the waiting game. <clears throat> so, the waiting game. Sitting right next to choose wisely. Some of you could have been waiting for this Ace of Cups. Like, when is it going to come in for me? And I feel like very soon. Um, but I also feel like this is saying, you know, don't disregard the things that you've done in your life up until this point. You know, if you're about to fall in love again, this feels like it, it must be different because I feel you are different. And, you know, I can't see Leo, like this waiting game, I really don't feel like it's you, you know, like waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for someone, because I can't see you doing that too long. You know, it's almost like if you love me, then tell me you love me. If you don't, then then you don't. What I do love, though is the three of pentacles coming up coming next to the ace of cups because this tells me whoever this is that potentially you're falling in love with and they you that you really are able to see each other's individuality appreciate each other for exactly who you are like i feel like no masks are needed you know, maybe I'm even presenting myself exactly who I am right from the get-go. You know, part of me feels like, like the wheel has been blocked. But now it feels like that wedge that blocked the wheel is now being lifted, is taken out. The wheel is starting to move again. This patience that you've had to have Again, don't look at it as wasted time because I feel like I feel like Leo, you've been doing something. You've been growing. You're trusting in yourself. 
And hopefully you're even trusting in love, however it may show for you. Uh, you know, and I feel like this is giving you a sense of comfort there also that, you know, first of all, this could be the one. And also very soon. The part of this patience could have been like, you know, am I truly going to fall in love? All right, what's on the bottom of the uh, Eight of Swords on the bottom of the deck. All right, so that definitely feels like where you were. Because there's no way I feel like you're still in that energy. This is a self-created prison. It says trapped in fear here. Let's see what's underneath it. The sun. Interesting. Your major arcana. It almost makes me feel like you weren't paying attention to yourself. Like maybe you weren't even aware that you had built certain walls up around you. Um, and these walls we build, we build for protection. But that's really our earthly mind. Our spiritual being is is much more open, much more, let's say, free loving. And the reason why is because, you know, as a soul or a spiritual being on this earthly plane, you know, the classroom. Um, our spiritual being knows that there's nothing we cannot get through. So this does feel like for a moment in time, you know, you did feel blocked. Maybe with the sun underneath it, you know, you weren't really catching the signs that the universe was sending you. But I do feel like you must have freed yourself. You know, the Eight of Swords is a self-created prison. And because it's self-created, you are the only one who can uncreate it. But look at the sun underneath that. Let's see what's under the sun. Why are my cards like the universe, the next chapter? Wow. That's probably what part of the waiting game was. So I feel like your guides got through to you, to be honest. I feel like something has helped you break down those walls. And maybe it was within, you know, patience. It was within like this period of time. Um, and maybe I realized that you know, I had to put myself first. I had to think about, you know, what it is I'm doing in the world. Can I stand on my own two feet? Um, do I feel strong within myself? And if that's the case, then I don't need to put up these, these walls, which really are a facade. I feel like the Eight of Swords, it doesn't block these aces. It's just, will I recognize them? But this is what I feel like. I feel like this is where you were. And I feel like you broke down those walls, Leo. And because you broke down those walls, I feel like it's opening up this whole new chapter for you. Okay. Let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. Interesting. Just knows star in the bottom of the deck. Let's do one more. Okay. Let's give them a cut. And let's go deeper. Start at the star. Number 17. You know, add that seven and that one together is an eight. New beginning. Three of wands, beautiful. So, with the three wands being the first um, clarifier, so to speak, this tells me that that eight of swords no longer exists. Doesn't mean that, you know, I have no fear 
about anything in my life, but I don't allow fear to stop me. This is really an optimistic view um, of your future, really without putting a lot of expectations upon it. You're telling the universe that I trust my ships will come in, in divine timing. And I trust that. And I believe that. This is someone who's living in the present moment. But again, has an optimistic view of their future. Even if I don't know what these ships carry. Well, I do. They carry the two aces here. But this is you. um, Well, breaking down those walls. Looking at life with a different lens. You know being optimistic instead of fearful right over the star it's like you're believing dreams can come true All right, we have the Eight of Wands over the Ace of Pentacles. Wow. Um, Eight of Wands, I read it a few different ways. First of all, I read it as what I think about, I bring about. And if I'm in this optimistic um, view about my life, it tells me that your vibration is also lifted. And then what I think about, I bring about, well, that's good. This is also fast moving energy. You know, it feels like as soon as the walls of that eight of swords are broken down, everything starts moving and it feels like in your favor. Temperance right below it. You know, to me where temperance is asking for patience, this is like go time. This is fast moving energy. And then we have the Ten of Wands over the Ace of Cups. All right. That's probably a little bit of why the Eight of Swords is here. Ten of Wands is a period of time um, where there could have been like a lot of responsibilities, you know, on your shoulders. If this is talking about love, it could certainly speak about, you know, where sometimes we have a tendency to put you know, to carry the weight of the relationship. And that's not fair. Right? That's not fair. So I feel like in this energy, I really do want it to end. And choose wisely right below that. That could be part of, um, you know, where a little bit of fear comes in, right? This is what I'm used to. Eight of Swords. Okay, so it made its way out on the table. Look at this. The Four of Wands. The Marriage Card. Over the Nine of Pentacles. And then the Beautiful Magician right over Temperance. Now that is power, my friends. That is realizing the power that you have. I find it interesting that the Eight of Swords made its way out on the table. But I get it at the same time. You know, it's almost like there's two different ways I can look at at my present going into my future. Either in a fearful state or an optimistic state. It's really going to be up to me. I feel like this is saying your ability to manifest. This is you manifesting these aces. But it's you putting those seeds of intention out. And then kind of letting go. And letting the universe surprise you. You know, for some of you, it can be someone you already know as it relates to love. 
But no way do I feel like this is just love. I also feel like it's talking about what you do in the world. And, you know, it's like you're seeing the fruits of your labor now. Excuse me, you know that Eight of Swords coming over the Three of Pentacles. It may be just like where you may be, maybe I was asking myself, you know, how do I want to say this? I feel like, um, like maybe I wasn't appreciating who I am. You know, maybe I had to wear mask in past relationships or other people wore mask or, you know, I was told that, you know, I don't like this about you or that about you. And I took it on, you know, like it was my own issues when really it was just someone else's. Um, so I feel like that's part of it. It's like understanding that you're worthy, you know, to have these blessings come in your life. But you also want to be ready for him at the same time. As much as you can. You know, and then we move into the marriage card. The commitment card. And, you know, what's mirroring it very soon? Coming over the Nine of Pentacles. Well, that's your, that's you feeling very independent. You know, being able to take care of yourself. And no wonder I saw, I put the Ace of Pentacles with the Nine of Pentacles, which brings us to the Ten of Pentacles, where the Four of Wands would be very similar type energy. This is about, you know, I have a feeling it's saying this could be the one. Well, here it is. And I feel this is also a sense of comfort, knowing that, Anyone in that energy, they want to be in that energy. This is not about forcing someone to be with me, right? If you don't want to be with me, then don't be with me. If you want to be with me, then be with me, right? But I also want to know where their vibration is at in the same breath. Here in the Four of Wands, it feels very good. Like, honestly, everything feels very good. The only thing, any worry, let's say, I would have is... You know, will you see it for what it truly is? Can you, will you be able to see these blessings as, um, you know, it's kind of like, like karma, like receiving good karma for the good works that you've done. And maybe now it's just time for you to celebrate. You know, and as it relates to love, I feel like maybe the biggest problem was I did have a tendency to carry the brunt of the responsibility, but I know that's not what I want anymore, right? I don't want that type of love. I want love that's free-flowing, you know, that flows both ways openly, like we are an open vessel to each other. I don't want to be the one who has to you know, constantly correct someone. There should be, doesn't feel like there even needs to be that. Yeah. But there probably was. It's almost like you have no fear as it relates to your finances and what you do in the world and your creative avenues. Um, you know, they all feel like they're doing very well or if I feel like I've been, you know, like, let's say I'm a writer and I've had writer's block. Well, that feels like it's being lifted. But some, some of it was self-imposed. And that's why I feel like, I feel like you've been learning, Leo. You've been learning and you've been evolving. Hmm, seven of swords over the seven of cups. Well, that makes sense. And I say that because that tells me that somewhere along the line, you probably dealt with someone who, um, 
You know, the seven of swords they call deception and envy. Thief in the night. And be someone who, um, you know, definitely wasn't an open vessel here. It, feel like, it feels like love may have flowed one way. Doesn't mean a person didn't love you. It just meant they didn't know how to love. You know, they didn't know how to make a, a commitment and be true to true to that commitment. You know, this is their own issues. These are things that they need to learn to deal with. And I feel like, I don't feel like in any way is it talking about this person coming back into your life. If if anything, I feel like this is where I can learn. This is the energy I can learn from. So I don't have to shut my heart down. You know, again, maybe my own vibration was just at a low place. And I just kept bringing that same type of energy back. Some of you could be with, the, you know, the same person over and over, but nothing seems to change. Well, I feel like the only change that can really work in your favor is for you to change it. You know what I mean? Like not accept it. I don't feel like this is what's coming into your life. I feel like this is showing you, you know, when I think about love, here's why the Eight of Swords is here. Because, first of all, I probably dealt with someone who, let's just say, lied. Let's just say, you know, it felt more like work than love. But they themselves live on a lower vibration. And you feel like, you know, it just feels like everything is changing. You, you know, like you're having these realizations. You know, I do feel there's a little fear over loving again. And and it makes complete sense. But yet, at this, in the same breath, I feel like what this reading is really saying is you don't have to worry. Especially once you've learned, you know, like this would be perfect narcissistic type energy. And if you've ever been with a narcissist, the chances of you being with another one are very slim, um, especially if you really like broke it down and understand that, right? Like a narcissist is never going to be able to give you all that you deserve. They're just thinking of them. And, you know, unfortunately, I got caught in their hooks, but that doesn't mean you have to stay. Okay. Let's keep going. There's no way Mother Mary would ask you to open your heart and then bring in a cheater. It's just not going to happen. But I feel like that Ace of Wands has a lot to do with it also. What I think about, I bring about. But then the Three of, I'm sorry, the Eight of Wands, and then next to it, the Three of Wands, an optimistic view, right? Coming right over your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And then that Eight of Wands manifesting them very quick, very quickly. First of all, I feel like money. So your money seems to be increasing. And then I feel love. We have the Four of Cups. All right. So the Four of Cups over the waiting game. Four Cups speaks about discontentment, boredom in one's life. This, the meaning of this card is to learn how to use your own spiritual discernment. Why? Because there is a cup being offered. This person's looking right at it. So, here's this cup. But, do I accept it or not? It tells me, especially over the waiting game, you couldn't have been too happy in that energy. Let's just say I was waiting for someone to make a, a true commitment to me. I feel like you need to ask yourself, like, why did you want that true commitment from that person? Because I feel like there's someone who 
could have like played mind games with you and you know it, yes you could have spent time like hoping that person comes back but i feel like in the long run this isn't about someone who's treated you badly and i feel like there's a difference of you know again different levels of love like you know this person definitely feels like they're like why would i wait for them <clears throat> They don't have much to offer my life. If anything, it's me enhancing their life. Well, how long do I want to do that? Literally connects that Eight of Swords directly to that cup that's coming in. We know the cup's coming in because we have the cup. All right, let's go right below. The full, a new beginning. A new beginning. You know, the full is about taking a uh, leap of faith. And with temperance here, I feel like you have nothing to fear. It feels to me like divine timing has arrived. Now, let's just look at the line that it's falling in. First of all, very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. And then we move into the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. The moves into the nine of pentacles you know, independent success. This is you feeling strong within yourself. This is you knowing I can t that you can take care of you. Doesn't mean that you're rich. You know, but I never want to even leave that off the table. It just means that um, that part of your life has been evolving. So now we have a new beginning that is coming under that four of wands the marriage card commitment two of wands so i feel like you're saying yes and then if you just look at the power in this line love yourself first and then the Ace of Pentacles, something that's coming into your physical world. Why? Well, because I feel like you're manifesting it. You're planting those seeds and those seeds are showing up. And the Magician, you know, and the Magician is the Fool's first mentor along the journey. And the, and the Magician teaches the Fool that you really possess everything you need to be successful on this next journey. And it is a new journey. You know, just like under the sun was the world, right? The next chapter. That's what the fool feels like. The next chapter. And the two of wands, I'm going to step upon it. So anyways, I was telling you the power and then I got lost. So love yourself first. The ace of pentacles. I'm coming into your physical world. You're a big part of that. Temperance says patience, right? But everything now looks like it's moving. And, you know, will you take that leap of faith? If I only look at this side of the board, I feel like the answer is yes. If I look over this side of the board, then I'm a little, I'm not sure. So let's keep going. Hmm, the chariot. Card of Cancer. Um, this is about movement. And to me... When the chariot shows up, that means that there's that balance has been found. You know, I feel like the chariot is moved by your intentions. So you tell the chariot where to go. And that's why it really becomes unlimited potential. We have the eight of cups. Interesting to cancer energy so close together but this is what i love 
Because we open up this route with the full, a new beginning, the willingness to take a leap of faith. And then the last card in this row is the Eight of Cups. This is emotional clarity. This is allowing oneself to have a new beginning. It's the number eight. Eight, infinity, as above, so below. It feels like a difference between, let's just say, an earthly choice and a spiritual choice as it relates to love. This is you really finding the emotional clarity that you needed, you know? And sometimes it's just literally saying that I gave someone too much of my time. They've shown me who they were. And for whatever reason, I didn't believe it. But now I feel like there's no denying it. You know, another thing about the chariot is I feel like it's both masculine and feminine energy. It's both light and dark. And that's what the balance is about. Some of you, I feel like, listen, you've been playing in the dark and now it's time to come out into the light. All right. We got a couple more cards. I know Ace of Wands. Inspired action. You know what I love about this right now? Especially where it's going to fall between the Fool and the Two of Wands. But so close to Temperance and the Magician. And so close to the Nine of Pentacles, Independent Success. And then the Four of Wands, Commitment. True love. Let's just put it that way. You know, it's like you're being guided to this person. Even if you already know this person. Listen, it's not this person. Because I feel like this is the person maybe I've been waiting for. Has left me in this state of discontentment. Even if I've got my shit together over here. With my money and I'm trusting in that. Now I need to find that same compassion. For me. For within me. So the Ace of Wands. It's action time. So again, where Mother, where I keep saying Mother Mary, where Temperance was talking about patience. Well, Seven of Cups again. And then the Page of Swords. I wouldn't be surprised because this happens a lot. And I know this because I do so many personal readings and. Personal readings are very in-depth, um, but I see it a lot, and I see it a lot just on the YouTube readings I do, where, you know, we deal, we've dealt with these, let's just say, lower vibrational people. Um, and by the way, I'm not really putting them down when I say that, because I feel like that was their choice, right? They choose to live in lower vibrational energy. And, you know, I have a feeling this is this is the type of person where things are always going wrong in their life, but they can't see it's it's their own doing. So, you know, I I feel like this is talking about like a new love, even if you do know this person. Um, again, it can relate to past life also. Um because I feel like this is something new that's opening up where there will be true commitment. I think what I was going to say is I wouldn't be surprised that right when, let's just say, you start to open yourself up to love again, I wouldn't be surprised if someone of the past who again was in his lower vibrational energy may give it one more shot but i think you'll shut it down very quickly especially if someone else has also shown has shown because i kind of get that like what if two people come at the same time one of them i already know you know, maybe I feel like I'm in love with this person, 
but this person hasn't given me many reasons. So, you know, I feel like at least I'm hoping that you would shut that down very quickly. And I say that because it seems like these type of people always make a repeat appearance right when things are starting to go the right way in your life. It's like one final test from the universe. Hmm. I love the Ace of Wands also because it lets you know that there would definitely be signs to help guide you. And if you if you're in the Three of Wands energy, again, optimistic about what your future holds, then I feel like anything that's of a lower vibration, you're just gonna sweep it out the door. Okay. I want to pick this up and I want to go back and I want to look at, though I don't want you to forget, we do have a commitment card or marriage card. And in this energy, everyone wants to be there. Like, I feel like it's the energy of when I meet someone, again, even if I already know them and it's not that one person. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I feel like it'd be very clear. Like, I don't feel like it'd be anyone to hold back. Five of Cups. So I wanted to look at these aces. Interesting, Five of Cups. So five speaks for change. And then the three of swords over that ace of uh, ace of cups. Interesting. Five of cups can talk about missing someone from our past. Um, you know, the danger in the five of cups is not getting lost in that energy. Because it can turn into like, woe is me. And then you have the three of swords right over that ace of cups. So, Leo, I know somewhere along the road you weren't treated well. But this ace of cups, or this five of cups, I have to tell you, I'm feeling it a little differently. Because I feel like this may be a longing. Um, a longing that you have that maybe just hasn't been fulfilled yet. You know, when the person makes a change that the five asks for in the five of cups, what's behind him are two cups. It's a soulmate. And um, I feel like there's a longing for the right person. You know, someone who can come in and really fulfill my life. Not hurt me. All right, well, let's go in between that. We have the star. And then the strength card. So your major arcana. And coming under that three of swords. And then we have the two of swords. Kind of in reverse, but not. So we'll just keep that in mind. Um, so again, I just feel like in the five of cups... Certainly, you could talk about someone of the past who has hurt you. You know, that's our human nature to, like, want back, even though we know they're no good for us. But what I'm really feeling is this is more of a longing for what maybe you haven't experienced yet. The type of love you haven't experienced, especially with the star right there. And then you have the three of swords over that ace of cups, but the strength card comes out. So it really is about looking within oneself. You know, the light and shadow of myself, the masculine, the feminine of myself. It's the willingness to look deep. It's really to learn about oneself. And I feel like the strength card turns into courage. And maybe the courage is to allow yourself to love again. 
But now I feel, especially if you've done the work of like the strength card, let's say you've gone, you've gone deep, you have more understanding now. Um, then I feel like you're much, it's much easier for you to take on the fool's rule of taking a leap of faith. Yeah, strength card's looking over at the star. So there's no way that they want the three of swords to happen again. But right behind the strength card is that two of swords. Now, the good news is it's come from an eight of swords down to a two of swords. Two swords could just simply represent a blindfold that for whatever reason I'm refusing to take off. It might mean that there's a truth that I just don't want to tell myself, but the truth is the truth. You know what I mean? And I feel like when we're honest with ourselves, that's what helps us to grow. That's what helps to usher in higher vibrational energy. You know, and I also find it interesting that I feel like this Ace of Cups is talking about new love. Um, but I feel like an old love just didn't appreciate you for exactly who you are. But I feel like this new love will. All right, so I just want to go right over top of that. With all that being said, and let's see if it brings about any changes. Page of Wands, my little risk taker. <clears throat> this could be your inner child. You know, you know what I love about the Page of Wands is this is someone who does take chances in life. And of course, they don't all work out. But this is someone who gets back up again. This might be a reminder to let your inner child out, Leo. And then the three of pentacles. And because I'm looking at these two aces, and really that's it. Um, first of all, I feel like your money sector feels set. Like trust in, and I also feel you may be inspired with new ideas, new epiphanies, and they're only to help you. Um, you know, I don't feel like it's anything you have to take on, but I feel like you you will benefit by taking that on. So be in a, like have your mind clear, be in the present moment, because again, I feel like you're being guided, but really in all areas of your life, same with love. And I feel like what this is saying is, you know, you dealt with people as it relates to love who didn't appreciate you for exactly who you were, wanted you to make changes that, you know, would benefit them but not benefit you. It's a different type of love. Just like Mother Mary said, I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. One love that was probably difficult has probably taught me more than I even realize. You know, sometimes if there's no love, but there's this X, we could certainly have these lonely moments where we try to pull them back in again. But, how are they treating you? Those are the things you want to ask yourself. You know, do I have to do I have to push and pull to get any reaction out of this person? Well, that's not what I want. So I feel like that's what the blindfold is. Just being very honest with yourself as it relates to past love. And where their vibration is or was and where your where your vibration was and is now, because I don't feel like you're in the same vibration. I feel like yours has lifted, theirs has not. All right. Let's just do one more go around. 
And I really want to look at, this could be the one. Keeping everything in mind. We have the five of swords. And then look at this, we have the wheel. So where I felt the wheel was blocked before, the wheel is now moving again. Interesting that the five of swords comes out with that. Five of Swords is where the toxicity lives. And that is part of the blindfold. I feel like as soon as you take off that blindfold, this wheel starts moving. You know, it's almost like as I do this reading, I feel your walls are coming down. And now the last bit of it is just being completely honest with yourself. You know, the five of swords, it is toxicity. It is usually other people. But I can very easily get pulled into this toxic energy at the same time. And that's the difference. That's what I feel like. These are the realizations that I'm having. And that alone gets this wheel moving again. This speaks of your destiny. And, you know, when we speak of destiny, though, we're looking at, you know, what I feel like is going to be true love. We want to remember that even the difficult situations are part of our destiny because they teach us. And I feel like if nothing else, you have learned, Leo. Like, like you've learned energy. Like, you can read people now. And again, if there was someone old who just treated you like hell, that's part of them in that Five of Swords energy. So it feels like what this is saying, because it's a five, when this change happens, when this blindfold is lifted, when you go within and, you know, first of all, don't blame yourself. Just allow yourself to begin again, you know, get excited for what lies out there. Understand your power in manifesting it also, though. You know, if nothing else that your reading has really shown is your power in manifesting the type of life that you see for yourself. You, you know, you do have to put in the work. You got to be willing to do that. You know, also, whatever you focus on is what you're going to grow. Again, your money just feels like it's naturally growing. And now I feel like love is going to start entering in. And if two people show up, and one of them is someone who has definitely hurt you before, that you may even call a narcissist, just shut that door. Don't even answer that call. Look at that. Something made me take one more. The Nine of Cups right in the middle. First of all, that's inner fulfillment. And I feel like the Eight of Swords, lifting the blindfold of the Two of Swords, what does that give you? inner fulfillment when i no longer deal with the toxic energy i say goodbye i clear it out of my life inner fulfillment nine of cups is also about fulfillment of wishes well you have the star well it's right next to the star card but you have the star card right here also two star cards so i feel like it's covering your life this wheel is moving again well, let me put it a different way. I feel like as soon as that blindfold comes off, as it relates to love, because I feel like money, your creativity, new ideas, epiphanies, all that, I feel like are already in the makings. Like, it's already happening. And then love. First, it's the realization of those who just don't know how to love, who didn't love me the way I deserve. Um, bringing you to this inner fulfillment and then the fulfillment of wishes 
with the death with your destiny right there. You taking a chance. Take a chance on me. Take a chance on you. I just realized patient or the page of wands, like I read that as like your inner child. It's coming right over temperance. You know, so it's like your spiritual team, they're with you. They're always with you. They're always trying to help guide you. You know, even with that eight of swords, but the sun under that and the world. It's like even in those periods of time, the signs are still trying to reach you. But just think of living your life with no blindfolds and then really trusting in the signs. I mean, it can be a life that's unrecognizable. It can be a life that you may call a dream. And this is not magic. It's showing you, you know, it's showing you how to get there. You know, what has been in your way, what kind of blocks, and what you can do now to lift those blocks. And to really start to see success in all areas of your life. Interesting. Um... Instead of reading Mother Mary, I feel like I'm going to take another Mother Mary card over this reading. Give him a cut. I feel like that's what it's calling for. Giving and receiving. Well, that's what I feel like in the old relationship. There wasn't a lot of give, a lot of receiving. There may have been a lot of giving. Um, but listen, you know, normally in this energy, it's because someone's compassionate. They're empathetic. And maybe I hoped to help someone change their life. But. They didn't listen. And, you know, just like I spoke about, again, karma. I feel like this is like good karma coming your way. What's it say? I balance being generous and receptive because both are equally important. Reminds me of the chariot. You know, a lot of us don't have a hard time giving, but are we able to receive? Is our heart open? Have we evolved past these toxic energies? And if we have, the universe responds in kind. It's just the way it is. Some people say, why can't I find what I'm looking for? Well, you need to ask yourself, where is your own vibration? What are you accepting? Do you know you deserve the best? You know, and are you able to give it at the same time? Because you want to be able to give what it is you want to receive. It's like a lesson in the law of attraction. All right, Leo, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, you know, really quite a beautiful reading. And I feel like, you know, if some of the hardships didn't come up, then it wouldn't be real, right? Because that's life. Like, you know, yes, these beautiful things can enter our life. There can be a, a you know, a period of time where we feel very successful. Uh, but maybe love isn't really matching up. Okay, well, what can I do? What do I need to look at? I feel like the five of swords, like every five years, you know, maybe every five months, take a moment, look around you, ask yourself, you know, what's toxic to me? Who's become toxic? What can I do about it? Is it how I want to live? The answer is no. 
then you're automatically raising your vibration. And then that wheel, it starts spinning. All right, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, you know, I have so much love for you. I really do. I always love doing your readings. Um, and I do feel like, you know, I feel like my son and my mom are big parts of our reading. Um, I can just tell by the messages, you know what I mean? Like the type of how they were, I can tell by the messages. So, you know, I guess what I want to say is there can be a period in your life where you really feel like it's never going to change. And what you want to realize is you have to be, you have to be the one that's willing to make that change. And that may be something within yourself, but it's really setting yourself free. You know, set yourself free from these earthly limited thoughts that we have. And remember that you're, you're, you're also this beautiful spiritual being. You know, our spiritual being is the intellect to our soul. Call on your guides. Call on the archangels, your angels. Talk to God. I don't know why I'm saying all this right now because I feel like everything looks quite beautiful. The only issue was wrapped around love a little bit. But I feel like you get it. You get it. So I'm going to let that be. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you as always. Um, thank you for your comments. Let me know and letting others know where you're at in this reading. Especially if this is something you've overcome. You know, someone may have had their hooks in you, but you've overcome that. I feel like your words can help heal another. You know, I've been back in that energy where I felt like, you know, I kept wanting the same thing over and I kept getting it. And it kept giving me the exact same thing, a tower. Um, so, anyways, free yourself and the rest will follow. I love you guys. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.